On this episode of Making Stuff, we shred classified documents, pre-wash our confetti, get a little messy, and we make recycled paper. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Making Stuff. I'm Christy. I'm Derek. And today, we're making paper. Fun thing to do, all ages. Um, if you watch some of our other tutorial videos, we talked about how we used our scrap material from our paper projects to make paper. Something that you can get into for relatively cheap. You don't need a lot and you can get some really fun results. Yeah, it really only takes maybe one specialty item. The other items you can find at the thrift store, you can DIY a few things, um, but it's very little that's needed to get into it. So yeah, let's go for what we have on the table. Let's break this down and the most easy, simple thing, you're gonna need paper. So we take our scrap papers, some misprints. We even have like our local ads that come in the mail. We utilize these as well. And it helps keep that from going into landfills by recycling it. So doing one step there, that's gonna be your start. And then setting that aside, you're gonna need something like a paper shredder. Uh, that's gonna help break down your paper into smaller, more manageable pieces. Not a necessity. It is something you can use to make it easier, but you can also just take your paper, rip it up into smaller pieces, and, and let this soak over water uh, overnight in some water, and it's gonna do the same thing. This just makes it a little bit easier and less hand work on your uh, Yeah, self. so you can, you can absolutely do it by hand. It will take you longer. Um, finding a sh paper shredder at the thrift store is really, is really key. We ended up searching for a few months until we found one, but this one I think we got for like six bucks. Uh, it's actually got the price tag right on it. Oh, $4.99. $4.99, $5. <laughs> Great. And it looked brand new when we got it. I think we had a discount coupon at the time too. <laughs> did have a 20% off coupon as well. Uh, so yeah, five bucks or even less and it works perfectly. It shreds all our paper into beautiful little um, tiny pieces for us. Yeah. Little tip, if you are going to be using your advertisements or like your uh, mail that gets sent to you, don't put your envelopes that have the clear plastic windows in it and don't put uh, credit cards through. That's gonna cause problems for you in your paper making. So keep those out of the shredder, but um, everything else, paper, all the different stuff that comes in, they'll shred just perfectly. Yeah, you wanna make sure it's all paper material. It can be like the thin advertising paper or your regular printer paper, but just make sure it's all paper. And if you are using heavier cardstock, just let it soak longer. It will break down and it is it be able to be utilized just the same way. Now, to break down this process, they, we are going to go into the pulp process, and for that, you'll need a, a blender. Again, you don't 100% need a blender, but this is gonna make life so much easier for you. You can do it by hand, uh, just mashing up the paper by hand, or using uh, like a, a spoon or a, a mortar or pestle type of uh, device to kind of break that all down, but this, again, thrift store, this was $6. <laughs> so, so far, five, six dollars and some scrap paper. We're only in this 11 bucks uh, to make some paper. Love it, easy peasy. <laughs> so after that, the specialty item does come into play. Yeah. That's gonna be your screens. And so what these are, these are called a decal. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that proper. <laughs> <I think laughs> <Like, so. laughs> but um, we got a kit like this. This was about $20 on Amazon. They come in a variety of sizes. Um, this has four different uh, of your standard paper sizes. This is really your specialty item. You can DIY these. I have seen people do embroidery hoops with some uh, mesh screen, but in the long run, this is cheaper and more efficient uh, to do it this, with, like buy a cheap set like this to get yourself started. And you can see results with different sizes of paper that we have stacked here. Yeah, we have immediately usable paper um, from these screens without having to do any sort of extra work if we want, so. Then after we get from the screen side of things, we'll uh, need a sponge to help release the paper from there. We're gonna need some fabric to help lay our paper and stack it while we're doing the drying process. And then something like uh, this here. This is a DIY press. This is not anything fancy. This is some scrap shelves. I think it's like melamine. Yeah. Right? And um, it just, it's, it's worn down, but I cut the shelf into size to fit our paper inside of it and some long bolts. And when I get a stack of paper, that's all through the process. This smashes down and squeezes out the rest of the water and then um, goes through that process there to get a nice flat and uh, even paper for you. Once the water's squished out, you then can pull it out and hang dry. You don't need some fancy dryers. You don't need anything. You can leave it out in the sun. We've done that before as well. 
yeah, we also have a little clothesline set up in our basement for when it's, you know, not ideal weather for outside. So really you can hang it or lay it flat or anywhere to dry. And then at that, those are like the main things. And then you will need, we've done uh, like your paper pulp in vats, similar like this here. Um, maybe like a bucket of like a uh, variety of sizes to kind of help keep your pulp and uh, make things a little easier for you. Yeah, and I think this is like a dollar store, like little plastic Tupperware container. And then this is just a large vat. So you can see all the paper shreds that we have already, but we use these type of uh, bins like this to actually uh, soak our paper pulp and do our paper screens right inside of this. Yeah, yep. These fit perfectly in the larger um, plastic totes. That's everything you really need to get started. We're gonna break down the steps now for you guys and show you our process of making paper. And then we're gonna come right back here and uh, show you the final result. Let's get into this process here. We use our scrap paper with the paper shredder, makes it super easy to get them all cut down real nice. You can see that pile right behind us of all the scraps. Here's us dumping all the scraps that we've used that paper shredder into a bin. Now what we're doing is kind of just breaking it down and then we're gonna use this paint bucket to soak everything overnight. Simply add water to the top of it. You wanna to top it off and make sure there's a nice even layer of water over the top of all your scrap pieces and just let it soak for 24 hours. Then after it's soaked for the 24 hours or slightly longer, um, you don't wanna let it go too long, but a good 24, 48 hours is fine. We're gonna to toss it right into a blender. What we're gonna do at this point is we're going to blend this down. We're gonna get it all broken down and you want it to be very consistent, very liquidy, um, but it's almost like a slimy, like gooiness that's there. And then what I'd like to do from this point is I'll take my uh, pitchers and I'll use an extra bucket like this one here. This store is about three pitchers full of pulp and it allows me to kind of measure to be a two to one uh, ratio. So one part pulp, two parts water, and that's gonna give us the consistency we want for our paper pulp when we're gonna actually dip the screens into this vat here so that we can make paper. Give it a nice little stir, mix it. I can't really tell, like, you have to feel it to know that it's right. And once you, like, kind of stick in that ratio, this is gonna come out perfectly. Here is the paper making process here. You are dipping your screen right into your vat of water. Doesn't have to be super deep uh, for this to work. You just get right underneath uh, that layer of paper pulp that's sitting, uh, floating on top of the water. You're gonna pull your screen up through that pulp and then a little shimmy here, a little shimmy there that screen is going to start letting the water flow through and all you're going to get left with is your paper pulp sitting on top of that screen. I like to have a little rack like this. This is something we got at the thrift store. I think it's like a, a roasting rack or a cooling rack. Um, pretty cheap, but it sits right on the side of the uh, vat there and it allows me to just grab another screen right away, do the same exact thing, dip it right underneath. I usually go right to the edge of this vat, dip underneath, pull it right up. You want to make sure you're pulling straight up so that your paper gets a nice even layer across the screen. And what's going to happen, you can see all that water is just dripping right through the screen. You want to let it drip and get as much of it of the water out at this point so you're not taking so much excess water to your next part. Next step of the process, as the frame has just kind of sat there for about a minute, maybe two minutes, letting that water drip out as I was making some other frames, they're sitting on another rack off camera. But what I just did, cleaned off the extra pulp, threw it right back in the vat, and I'm gonna get it ready to take this outside to our next station that you see here. This right here is just a simple piece of fabric that we cut to size. It allows us to get our layers of paper mashed together in our press. Then you're gonna need a sponge that you see right there. You're gonna take your frame, separate them, and then it's a simple flip of the frame onto that paper. Now, that pulp is sticking really well to the screen, so it's not gonna fall out on you if you have the right ratio of water to pulp. And then all you're gonna do is take your sponge, start batting uh, the top of the screen so that you're getting all that water out of the uh, paper pulp. And that paper pulp is gonna start separating on the bottom there from the screen. But you can see right there, I'm pointing out that the separation of the screen is starting to happen. You can see that little layer there that's uh, occurring. And what you do is you just wanna get right into the corners, make sure all that extra water is taken out before you start lifting it. And you're gonna see, as you lift it, that paper is gonna separate from the screen. I'm having a little trouble there, so a little bit more sponge. This first one's usually pretty wet and pretty soaked and pretty thick. So 
you get that separated and that's that's paper that's it's gonna dry and it's gonna make paper after this point what we do is we're gonna take another piece of fabric lay right on top of this paper and from that point we're ready for the next screen to go on top and lay uh, your paper on and just keep stacking till you're done at this point it is just a step and repeat process when making the paper how many you want to make is up to you how much pulp you have uh, pre-gamed for this is up to you so you can see next layer next screen here we go doing the same exact thing here's a, the next layer going on we already did uh, again going through we're gonna just get all that water out that's the key thing here you really want to get a, a lot of water you can see each time I'm pressing that sponge in there there's a good amount of water that comes out of the paper still and it's just gonna release for you pretty easily once you get all that water out if you leave too much water it's going to pull it's gonna separate it's want to tear I really want to share this last little tip with you guys what you're seeing here is when our paper pulp is running too uh, low in our vat you want to add more paper pulp to your mixture this is thinned out uh, paper you can see through it the edges don't quite uh, stick well to the uh, screen you start getting weird pools and this is what's going to happen when you're uh, too low of a ratio of pulp to water with that we're at the end of our stack here we made about 10 sheets of paper they're uh, stacked in there I didn't do a full run on this just for this tutorial purpose what we're going to do here is take the top part of our DIY press. Like I said in the video earlier, it is just two pieces of shelving that I cut down. I think I picked up the shelves on the side of the road, maybe drilled four holes, got four bolts and we start tightening it down. As we tighten it down, you want to make sure not to go so hard into one corner, kind of tighten down, move to another corner, then move to another and then kind of rotate around and kind of just make pressure rotating. So it starts squeezing that water out. And at that point, it's about an hour to two hours of it sitting in this press and really let it squeeze out. That water starts to just run out very quickly. There's a little bow. It's totally fine. That's not going to damage anything. It's going to just keep that pressure nice and even. You know you're getting a lot of good pressure when you see that. Last step, we are just going to open up the press and start peeling that paper and get them right onto a clothesline or a hanging system and let them dry. Okay, so... You can see the process is super simple. It's very therapeutic actually. I love enjoying it because I can sit there for a few hours making a bunch of paper and then in about a day or two, once it's all dried, I have material that I can use to create some cool art with. But um, one of the things we missed and uh, want to make sure we do mention here is fabric that we're using. Yeah, so really you just want something that's absorbent. Um, so cotton base would be ideal, but doesn't necessarily have to be cotton, but this is just some flannel, or um, the other one we use is some uh, felt-backed uh, upholstery fabric that has a nice kind of texture, which gives some texture to the paper. So keep in mind that whatever fabric you use, the texture of that fabric is gonna um, be the texture that you have on your paper. Yeah, once it's all smashed in the press, it's gonna absorb, the paper is gonna absorb that. So, um, all our uh, uh, fabric is scrap fabric as well. We didn't spend on anything special. This was stuff that we found in the bargain bins at our local fabric store. And um, it's super easy to cut to the shape you, uh, size you need. And you get a lot of pieces and you can really get a good stack of paper going. So from those steps that you s just recently saw, here are some of the paper results. Now, you can see we haven't gone through the full uh, um, process with these here to press them flat, but all you really need to press these flat, we have ourselves a cold press that we use, but you can get heavy books. You can get, if you have some workout weights and a flat piece of uh, wood, you can lay these right underneath and get these to flatten down. You can also put them back into that press that uh, we used in the uh, video to squeeze all the water out. Once it's dry, you can use that same press to keep all your paper pressed and flattened. And these are beautiful results they're super fun there's all kinds of speckle you can see all the different types of paper that we've got in there the different dyes we use for to get different colors we've got greens blues pinks yeah and possibilities i said it in our previous videos <laughs> are endless when it comes to this but um what you get with uh when it comes out of the press this is the final result we didn't really show you the drying process we just hung it on a clothesline that's nothing fancy no secrets or anything like that we keep it on the fabric you can see it holds up on the fabric uh here and then it just peels right off it's kind of a satisfying nice peel and then when you're processing it you're just peeling these off 
And then, like I said, you're going to get these into a flat uh, press, uh, some heavy weights, some heavier books. Get it all nice and uh, laid out flat. And let it just sit and uh, flatten these down. And you've got some pretty workable uh, pieces of paper. Uh, if you want to finish edges, you can put them through a paper cutter, uh, scissors, trim the edges up. But fun results, like we utilize them. We actually screen print on them, which one of our future tutorials, we're going to show you how to screen print. But holds up really well to screen printing. Christy actually did the watercolor on these as well. And um, we have some cool art results that are on recycled paper. So our own unique touch on the paper, our own unique touch, unique touch on the art. All right, well, that's it, guys. It's really that simple to make your own paper. Um, it can feel like a little bit of a labor intensive process, but like Derek said, once you kind of get in the groove, it can be very therapeutic and we find it to be a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun experimenting with the different um, dyes and effects that you can get from the paper by um you know the different shreds that you add to it the dyes that you add to it the uh fabric that you use to get different texture on it like you said the sky's the limit possibilities are endless um so we hope you enjoyed watching and uh did you have anything else to add well yeah breaking it all down when it's all said and done total cost for us to really get into something like this was just under 30 dollars um roughly um give or take a few bucks but if you really wanted to get into it and like it's this minimal investment we're using recycled paper um that we get for free uh in that sense so it doesn't take much it's not too hard it's not too complicated we hope uh these tutorials that you guys are watching are inspiring you to maybe try some of these things out we've enjoyed it we've had fun doing all these different things and we have plenty more to share with you guys so like subscribe comment if you guys have made the paper comment if you like want to try something or if you've seen something on our social media that we've made and you want to know how we make it let us know we'll probably make a tutorial out of it <laughs> but thank you guys for watching and staying tuned for this whole episode here we'll see you guys on the next one bye see ya